Welcome to another video by Ferros Technology. Today we want to talk about VBA variables and how to use them. So let's go ahead and get started. What we're going to start with then is naming rules. First off, they must begin with an alphabetical character. In other words, you can't start with a number. Okay, can't start with a special character of any sort. It has to have a unique name, and this would include names for your variables in your VBA and your names of your objects in your forms, reports, and labels that you have out there. The variable name cannot be used elsewhere in the procedure or in modules that use the same variables. It must not contain spaces or punctuation characters except an underscore. And I'll show you how to use that underscore character a bit later. It must not be a reserved word such as sub or module or form. Now, VBA will tell you if it's a reserved word and it'll give you a warning so that you can change it slightly so that it's not exactly a, a reserved word, okay? And it can't be any longer than 255 characters and I hope none of you actually try. You need to be descriptive. Being descriptive helps you understand it more later when you have to reread your code. But being as long as 255 characters can get to be a bit obnoxious. But there's a definitely a, a happy medium somewhere in between. There are also some naming conventions that you might consider too. You can use a mix of uppercase and lowercase characters like the word total cost where the T and the C are uppercase. That's sometimes called this camel casing. Using all lowercase as in the word counter, you could use separate them by underscores. So total cost becomes total underscore cost. That way you can separate the words, make it look a little bit more like English, but you can't use a space. So the underscore becomes a good alternative. And then preceding the name with the data type of that value. In other words, if I'm going to dimension it as a long variable, I would put the number, the letter L in front of it. So it'd be L total cost, for example, or it would be, if it was a double, it would be double total cost or C. If it was a total cost of currency, it would be a C total cost, that type of thing. So declaring variables, Usually you declare variables at the very beginning of a procedure. Being at the beginning of the procedure allows you to quickly define it and be able to find them later when you need to understand what the variables are. All you have to really do is declare the variable before you use it. But putting it at the head is the normal convention so that people can find it when you need to. There is a thing called explicit declaration. So if you have option explicit at the top, it requires you then to declare variables before you use them. That is always a good practice because you can dimension them afterwards. You, in other words, you could dimension it and not tell what type of variable it is. Option explicit get, keeps you out of those little troubles of declaring a variable and trying to put a different type of data type in the variable later on. So why? Here's, here's an example of how option explicit would keep you out of trouble. So here we have a variable we've labeled as uh, supervisor and we've told it supervisor, we've declared it up above, but supervisor is Joe Jones. And now we go to use that variable, okay? So we have down here, me text supervisor equals S supervisor. Well, S supervisor has Joe Jones in it, right? Well, that version of supervisor doesn't because it has an ER instead of an OR. So you would be perplexed as to why your text box called text supervisor didn't have a value in it. I put the value in it, but you actually didn't. Now, if you had option explicit, you would get down to me text supervisor and you say equals S supervisor and say, sorry, there's no variable by that name. And you would quickly realize you spelled it wrong and be able to fix it right on the fly before you had to do a bunch of debugging to find it later. So you can force explicit declaration. If you want to use it all the time, you just go up to your tools menu and click on the tools menu down to options. And under options, there's a require variable de declaration. And that puts your option explicit up in your declarations area so that you can 
quickly and easily make sure that you declare every variable. The next thing we want to talk about is variable scope. Now, if you use the dim keyword in the declaration section, in other words, above where we saw option explicit, it would be available to all the procedures within that module. If you declare it within a module, in other words, within a subroutine or a function, it's available only to that procedure. The next level is to make it public. If you declared a public variable, it's available to all modules within the application. The next thing is private. Basically, it's the same thing as the dim if it's used in the declaration section. It's best to use private instead of dim if you desire variables to be declared for the entire module. Now, there's various different variable types. These are the most common. And what I've tried to do is consolidate this list so it was a little easier to comprehend and understand. The biggest one that you'll use a lot for a number would be the either the integer or the long integer. It has no decimal point. It only has significant, significant digits on the left side of the, of the decimal point. Integer is up to 32,000 and, and some. The long is a lot larger. If you need a lot larger number, it goes up into the two trillion area. The next one would be your currency or your decimal. Your decimal uses up to 28 decimal places beyond the decimal to the right. Currency is limited at four decimal places. So if you only need a currency, that's usually good enough. Uh, a decimal would be used for numbers that you need more accuracy. So the next thing is a string. String stores your name, your last name, first name, your stores place names and anything that you would put within quotes. Um, not a number in this case. It could contain numbers, but if you intend for that number not to be a, an actual number like a zip code or a, a social security number, something with dashes in it, that would be a, considered a string and not an actual number. The next one you might use is a date. The date is a, a variable that goes from all the way from January 1 of 100, in other words, 100 AD, to December 31st of 9,999. It should be a large enough range for anybody to use unless you're a really serious genealogist in the middle of the Middle Ages and before where you would want a date possibly in the BC range. That, of course, wouldn't fit the bill. So you might have to make other accommodations than the Access Database for those. Now, there are other variables. A Boolean, if you have a checkbox, you would use a Boolean that would be a true, false, true, false, and on, off, that type of thing. It's a two value, either on or off type of, uh, of variable. Now, I've saved the two that you'd use the least for last. The byte is only up to 255. It has no decimal places, no negative numbers. So if you need a, just a very small number for a counter, that works perfectly fine. If you need a very, very large number, your single and double uh, are much, much larger than the decimal uh, variable type, but it's a float. It will do its best to estimate within about 28 to 50 decimal places to the right. It extends as much as 340 decimal places to the right of the decimal and to the left of the decimal. So they are, doubles are very, very large numbers. You'd use those in astronom astronomical type of, of figures, okay? So I hope you've gained a good bit from this video and I hope that you uh, will hit the like button if you do and send it out to other people. Uh, the channel is growing and we're getting to the point of being able to, to really uh, do the things that we want to do with the channel. So if you can consider subscribing, that would be very much appreciated. We hope to see you again sometime. Thanks.